Okay, what we've got here is a sine curve, but it's not a straightforward sine curve. What we have got is a transformation of the sine curve. A multiplier in front, a multiplier inside, and x minus c to finish it off. And we've got to ask ourselves, what does the a, the b, and the c do to our usual sine curve to create this thing here. I've got a file here. Um, you'll find the download link either under this video or on the page you're looking at. And you can try it yourself, but I will illustrate what's going on. The A, our first job. If we put a multiplier in front, let me highlight that. What we will see is we will see very simply a change of amplitude. We can make the curve larger, smaller and that multiplier very direct amplitude of one usual amplitude of two three whatever there we go we've got a simple amplitude stretch so the a is the amplitude of the curve let's go back have a look at that so what we've got is we've got amplitude of a and if we look at our curve here amplitude of four tells me that that must be four so my next job is to look at B. Let me go back to my curve, turn off my amplitude, B. Now B, the number here, normally this is the ordinary sine curve, has a period, does the full cycle and then repeats over 2 pi radians. If I change B very easily, what you'll see happening is you'll see that period change. The bigger B, the smaller the period. And what we will see is that a usual sine curve has a period of 2 pi radians, but if we put a multiplier in, the period changes 2 pi over b. So all I need to do to identify b is to ask myself, what is the period? Let me go back and have a look, and we will see that the period is 2 pi over b. And if we look at our curve here, take any cycle, and then see when it repeats. The cycle that's easiest to look at, I think, is just starting here. We see this cycle down, up, back to the start, and we've done that in pi naught. Pi creates a cycle, and then we get the repeat. So the period is pi, which means we must be using a b of 2. So our b must be 2. Final question is, what is this constant here, this variable here, this c? Let's have another look. Turn the period off and see. Phase. Now, very simply, what happens here is that if we put a minus 2, we get a horizontal translation of plus 2, plus 3, and there we go, take it back to the start. So that's a simple horizontal translation. So what we've got is we've got a what we call a phase given by C, and that's a translation, phase change given by C translation, and the translation is negative C horizontally, nothing vertically. And in this case, what I see, if I look at my curve, there we go, goes up, goes down, finishes off, but what it's done is it started with a translation there of what is pi by 2, and so that must be pi by 2 there. And finally, just to finish things off, let's just have a look at something that's not in our question, but very useful for these types of questions. If we get a plus d on the end, um, plus d, very simply, gives us the vertical translation. So there we go, negative 1.5 vertically, positive 2 vertically, and back to the start with the usual d equals 0, which I think is the case in our, we've got no d on the end, hence we've got it oscillating around the axes. So there we go, we've got three variables, the amplitude, the period change and the phase there, all connected to this transformation. As I say, you can download the um, GeoGebra file and have a look at that. Um, animate that for yourself, play about with these, and try to get your head around what the A, B, C, and possibly, in some questions, a D will do 
to your sine curves.